Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Hello. We can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of penguins, open source, floss. And this mm-hmm. week, uh, new audio stuff, but that's me, man. This is called Tuesday around this house. Um, speaking of me, I am Vin Stone, joined <laughs> every week by Hollywood Joe. Oh, in LA yes. with a red shirt and the man <laughs> with no plan. But he's on an island Aww. in Britannia. There's one Pedro no, Mateus. I just make it up as I go along. That's All the right. best way. <laughs> Improv comedy. That's not funny. That's what we do here. Hey, uh, everybody joining us live. What's going on? What's new? If you followed me on social media, mm-hmm. you saw a picture. I believe that was uh, the entirety of that day. So <laughs> I got on and apparently the flying spaghetti monster, because the plan for that day was like, oh, yes, let's go to the big box store and get some new electrical outlets for the studio. Flying spaghetti monster was like, you know what? I don't want you rewiring electrical stuff today, apparently. Because oh. <laughs> cut everything on and uh, our thread rubber. It's like, no, I don't feel like booting, man. I'm like, what, what's going on? Uh, oh. So you go through, do you, do you have that experience where you go through, like, oh, I, I'd, I'd come to terms with, okay, the 2060 died. That, you know, <laughs> which admitted, oh, okay. admitted, yeah. admittedly, it, you know, I cut it on and the little thread rubber boards got like error code and like B2, what moon glyph be this? And it was like shrug emoji in the manual. And it's like, it's not the first time I ran into that thing. So I'm like, um, then I was reading online, people like, ah, it's usually my video cards having an issue. And so, you know what? I plugged in like a 980 and I just swapped that out. I'm like, nope, same problem. I was like, dang it. Because that's a founder's edition still under warranty. And I knew they would be at least ship me back a 2060 super. I was kind of good with that. <laughs> what it boiled down to is I could only get it to boot once I remove not one, not two, but three black magic encoders from the, um, Thread Ripper. Mm. Then it would boot. Then, then I started playing musical chairs on the uh, PCI. SS PCIe <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Like, would boot with that one? How about yeah. this one? What if I move the network current over here? Because they're all taken. That's why we have a Thread Ripper, not for the speed so much as the PCI lanes and availability of that. And um, it finally came back to life. So, yay. Now, now I'm terrified okay. to the point where I'm like, because I did have, it's like, oh, I wonder if it's power supply. I, I need to have a backup power supply for that thing because mm-hmm. you got to have that weird uh, thing, dual EPS and all that fun stuff. Also, just to keep life fun, keep life interesting here at LGC, I run Debian testing. So, you know, cutting edge ish. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> about as much as Ubuntu is. So <laughs> it's yeah. kind of fun. You know, it's like choose your own adventure. If everything's working, that's fine. But if you get bored one day, just run, you know, apt update. Look at the fresh 150, 170 packages. Like, hmm, do I want to pull the trigger on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Last but not least, um, Pedro and I came to a very, like, oh, I guess we're at the end of our um, Black Mesa for now. Adventure, yes. yeah. <laughs> we ran into that last Friday. So I, uh, out of curiosity, I was looking for a return to Castle Wolfenstein. And I was like, how's that? Does that still run on a modern system? Of course it does. So we're going to be getting into that uh, this coming Friday. So I invite everyone to come out and Fine. play. <laughs> Yes. There will be further details on that announcement. This new thing I put on Discord, this brand new invention that I had all by myself. It's called an announcements tab that I like stole because I saw it in another <laughs> um, Discord. I was like, that's a good idea. You know, that confused me. I saw that show up on Discord. It's like, which channel is this again? <laughs> yeah. Like, Where's, where, did, where did LGC go? It's like, oh, wait, this is LGC. What? We don't <laughs> practice that nonsense here. But, yeah. <laughs> If uh, Pedro, <laughs> myself, or Jordan are doing anything stream-wise, we'll, there'll be an announcement there. You can always check that. So mm-hmm. that's what's new with me. Get that out. Of, oh, yeah. Thing. Mm-hmm. I got thing. See, there's a thing I got that showed up like 15 minutes before Next the uh, show. Oh, nice. <laughs> show started. That's just glowing. Your it's thing loses a point for this LED ring because that. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> that's some nonsense that I'm not happy about. But, whoop, wrong one. See, I'm so angry I hit the wrong button. Um, <laughs> not a fan. Blinded of, with rage. Not a fan of yeah. this RGB, too. 
<laughs> the ring of no. Nope. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> Do you know how long it's going to take to get that whited out? <laughs> Maybe I can use like a Sharpie on it. We'll find a way. I hope I don't have to yes. like crack it open and cut some leads to get that done. That's what's going uh -huh. on. Uh, yeah, it's just an interface to go along. Uh, control surface to go along with control surface. There will naturally be a video about it. Jill, what's new with you, man? Oh boy! Besides watching lots of uh, rewatching lots of episodes of the IT Crowd with my husband, which is always a joy, um, I just realized uh, last week marked marked my two year anniversary on LWW. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it's been that long. It's just flown by. It's it's been so wonderful being here with with Ven and Pedro, and this awesome community. And it's just... You don't need to lie to the people. Yeah, did you pay <laughs> to say that? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like, it's, it's okay, Jill. You don't need to lie to people. It's fine. Oh, no. Oh, I love you guys. You guys are my family. <laughs> uh, people have said worse things about me. Uh, Peter, what's going on with you? Well, uh, you had the issue with the thread booper, not boop. Well, not booping. Oh, yeah. Uh, I posted and... that in Discord. You're like, it's been one of those days, mm. Francis. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and <laughs> because while, you know, working from home and whatnot, and I had like work stuff here, and I had browser and Thunder Chicken and Discord over here on the UHD monitor, and mm. all of a sudden it goes black. Table. Uh -huh. Oh, poop. What okay, happened? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> okay, we, we got to go through all the fields because you got to. That 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 was the like nasty part with thread rubber because we've been doing this for so many decades. You have to go through the um, troubleshooting thing, so you've processed mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, boop, go, <laughs> you've got thirty things you're working on right there. You're like, okay, what could this be logically? All right, let's start with this. What was yeah. your first thought? Cable or monitor? Uh, my first thought was the monitor died. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. it's like kind oh. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> so I yanked the uh, cable, put the uh, thing on the back of the monitor to the other uh, display port. Nothing. It's like, oh, no. crap. Okay. The oh. OSD is still up, so it's not, yeah. you know, power to the monitor. That's right. okay. So um, let's see. Uh, swap the um, 1080. Mm -hmm. Pull the 1080 out, put it in another PCIe slot. It's like, no, it's still doing the same thing. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, let's yeah. swap the monitors around. Plug plug the UHD one to the HDMI. It's like, oh, it came on. Hmm. Oh, don't mm -hmm. tell me. So oh. I went, yeah, I played uh, <laughs> musical chairs with the display ports. It's like display port one works just fine. Display port two, nada. Display port three works just fine. It's like. Okay, we have a dead display port. Hmm. Neat. <laughs> now, fortunately, yeah. we do live in this wonderful future to where you're like, eh, I got another one. In fact, I got like two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and HDMI 2.0 in the GPU as well. So push comes to shove, I can use that. <laughs> yeah, right. As somebody who yeah, jams up video cards myself with monitors, I'm like, uh, I've uh, never had a display port fail, though. Yeah, uh, I look I've, for I've had one. Yeah. <laughs> dear, dear fate. This I look forward first. to my display port <laughs> failing after I said that. Yeah, man. That... It, it popped my uh, display port failure uh, cherry. <laughs> oh. I fully expected one because uh, I had to order a like a 3.5 meter display port cable that just didn't, doesn't fit. It's just too chalky enough. The video cards moved down out of the top slot, it would fit. And I was like, eh, click and get it way more force than you should apply. You know that? That, that amount of force yeah yes. <laughs> to get it to click in because I got tired of it coming unplugged but yeah it still works so good on that um cool well uh not cool but you, you just moved it's it working right? yeah, yeah it's just, working it's, I can still do 144 Hertz on the uh 2k monitor <laughs> and I have uh 3840 by 2160 at 60 is, Hertz man. on this one so hey that's what it was you wore it out <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, ha it that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Too many hurts. Uh, let's get into it. We've got enough playing around. Let's talk about the uh, 2004 beta that is out for public consumption that anyone can play with now. Yeah, so so the latest beta, 2004 of Ubuntu LTS. Um, I've actually been having a lot of fun testing the beta release on old hardware and new hardware, but it, it's been ama I was amazed on how well it runs on older hardware, like a, an early 64-bit AMD uh, laptop. 
and before gnome was just chugga 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 and now it's it's zippy it's it runs much faster it's more polished and there is a new dark mode setting yay we all rejoice <laughs> <laughs> and i also like the do not disturb mode to silence annoying those annoying push notifications and yeah, this That's was nice. a feature. I yeah. would take it the outside <laughs> and light it on fire if I got a desktop notification. That was yeah, push. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, fortunately, Wimpy had included included that with Ubuntu Mate, and he brought it over to Ubuntu Mate. Oh, it comes with Mate. free fire. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and so... It's it's a really wonderful release, and I'm looking forward to also to upgrading my broadcasting rig to Ubuntu Mate twenty point oh four because those all the uh, other betas are out to test as well, like the Zubuntu and 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 Ubuntu Mate, and the Ubuntu Mate one is supposed to include much better high DPI support, which is great. I'm running um, nineteen ten right now on my broadcasting rig, and there are some issues with the high DPI, which it's hard for me because I'm low vision, <laughs> so it's, that's been an is issue. But I also just want to let everyone know uh, that Martin Wimpress and Alan Pope would love everyone to beta test and file bug reports. So, and it's very easy to do now. In fact, they've even done videos on how to do it. <laughs> so that's really Yeah, awesome. this laptop right here has been running um, Ubuntu mm -hmm. Mate for... When did the wow. alpha come out? Alpha. I, I don't actually remember, but it was several months ago, and uh, this one's been running it, and it works pretty well. Um, admittedly, I don't really poke at it too much. I just try to use it like I would a laptop, right? And it works. It works very well. Mm -hmm. A couple of things with this: uh, ZFS support's going to be there out of the box, which is pretty cool. But yeah. They have a note. It's like, you know, if this thing fails to boot, um, if there are existing pools, name bpool or rpool. So name them dpool, like a normal person um, <laughs> on a second drive. Uh -huh. Snap Store is going to replace the Ubuntu software as the default tool for finding and installing packages and snaps. Uh -huh. So pseudo app stalls, <laughs> synaptic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, yeah. to be fair, I... Yes. I think a price synaptic out of my cold live hand. Mm -hmm. Period, man. I or I'm just going to be on the command line. I only get synaptic when I, I I'm feeling searchy. Like, yeah, I'm not it's sure. Like, I gotta thing, right. I gotta look for this thing. Well, so. there's that. There's yeah. the debate of like, do I open synaptic and search or just go to Google? Mm, <laughs> it's usually yeah. for development. It's like, is this dash dev or lib that dash de? Uh, yeah. And if it's uh, if you go to Synaptic and you find it, you can always just tick the box there. It's like, yay, install. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, not good news, but I'm sure there's going to be a uh -huh. lot of people on, With, on, the, uh, on the internet. Opinions? That's gonna, yeah, they're going to be like, I told you so. <laughs> well, uh and, you know, to be fair, they have the right to do that. Uh, because mm -hmm. Olaf, uh, Olaf Schmidt Wischofer, oh. why did I put myself through that, mm. um, <laughs> uh, has a bit of a message for the KDE community. And he is a KDE person himself. And he says, it's like, okay, the QT um, ecosystem is comprised of three things. The uh, KDE community, the QT project, and the QT company. And the QT company is the one in the spotlight here because mm -hmm. you know back in january they restricted lts releases to paid subscribers only and um now they have threatened to delay the open sauceness of everything else qt related for 12 months because of the current health concerns and they uh, them wanting to maximize uh, the revenue in the short term and the kd people obviously don't want that because it means that they would have to work off of um out of date or older um versions of qt in order to build the framework necessary for kde and this comes in the heels of the negotiations that kde and the open source uh, qt community have been uh doing with the qt company 
for a long, long time. So it's clearly they want max profit short term. And I don't know if they realize what that's going to do in the long run. Because, yes, you will get more people paying for the license in the short term. But after someone forks it and does a good job of it on a recent enough version, you're not going to get any more money. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think one of the first things that, uh, to speak to your point there, what, what's going to happen is the businesses that are currently licensing it will continue and nothing is going to happen. Yes. But <laughs> we were talking about this for we went live is, you know, I, if there's anyone, a single person at KDE, the KDE Foundation, that didn't like immediately start like really, really, really 100% for realsies start on plan B. Once this was announced back in January, you know, the, there, there might be some issues with some leadership there because this was something that could happen. No one really thought would actually happen. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, it's never going to be a real issue. I understand that because, you know, you want to think the best from everyone. Yes. But, you know, business is... You can be naive like right. that. It's fine. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's really easy for me to say... But, you know, after the fact, but I, I said the same thing back in January. I'm not like, oh, I'm right. No, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying right now. It's just that I don't like it when something, you know, when you prepare for the worst and the worst happens. Yeah. Contingency plan. There's something to be said for it. Uh, I think we're going to have to really seriously come back and rethink the we can't fork QT argument. That is because it's such oh, a, yeah, no, that mm. that's a monumental nightmare. Is yeah, it is, <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, I think Strider, even <laughs> somewhere, Miguel Miguel is saying, Told you, mm -hmm. you, you might know him from Gnome, but mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, well, Jill? you know, yeah, so. Thank goodness we have the the KDE Free QT uh, Foundation and that it ex exists, and this will help secure the continued existence of the open source QT, which is very important right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. you better get used to that base <laughs> uh, framework and the current functionality that it gives you because it's not going to be moving anywhere in the near future. We yeah. don't know. <laughs> And I think it's a scary thing for everyone involved in this. Like, no one knows what the legitimate outcome from this is going yeah. to be. You know, what, what will take place. We're just throwing stuff. Don't panic yet. This could all get resolved. But, you know, this is not fun times. I, I just remember, like, the big arguments on Slashdot billions of years ago when I was but a wee lad. It's like white people didn't use KDE because QT wasn't open source. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. yeah, no yes. change, didn't I? I hope, I hope it gets resolved because Noom needs competition. Yes, definitely. You know, you need, mm -hmm. you need an option that has yes. configuration buttons and stuff. <laughs> People like those. <laughs> yes, that actually gives you settings. <laughs> 100%. Good news, everyone. Libra Speed is a speed Yay. test. It's free. It's open source. No flash, no Java, no WebSocket, no bull. Squeeze. See? But you can still read. <laughs> I can't cover that up. Uh, they got everything available on the GitHub. It's a thing. You can play with it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, Pedri, I think you had roughly the same experience I did. I'm like, this doesn't, this does not uh, represent my actual speed. I mean, it's done in HTML5. It's really easy to just like drop it out. I mean, it's mm. PHP node. You can do multiple servers. And uh, I think it's neat. I like it. But I think the use case is like, this is something that you would, what do we do? Download, upload, ping, jitter, IP address, telemetry. Result sharing is optional. Multiple points of test also optional. Server requires, you need SQL, PHP, that's it. And yeah, Apache or Nginx. Or what would you call it? Nginx? Yes, yeah, Nginx, yeah. <laughs> Nginx. <laughs> that's the thing you can throw there. This, maybe if you were... Wanting to set up a speed test between two points, but yes, yeah. on a local yeah. network or you're setting up like a network connection between two completely different places and you need to check between the two. Mm -hmm. Yes. For actual internet 
connectivity, speed testing. No. no. The, the, the speeds, yeah, they yeah. vary a little bit too much depending on the server. Uh, the default Paris server uh, for me, I got 30 megs down and 9 up. And then I changed to the Germany server and I got 198 megs down and 23 up. So... I yeah. think I'm getting like yeah. 30 or f no, I get 135 from friends yeah. and like the New York uh, VM, yes. I get <laughs> like 30 megabits. Yeah, the new war New York one definitely does have issues, and you know my idea is is they need to set up more server locations, and that would be very helpful because I know um, I'm here in L.A. and the Las Vegas one was pretty accurate when I did the Las Vegas uh, settings. Three hundred I got was showing three hundred megabits um, per second symmetric, which is correct. And but I did the New York one, and it was just like what happened to to Ven. It was like twenty thirty <laughs> megabits per second, and I, I'm like, well, that could be also because they're having a lot of uh, internet overload at the moment. <laughs> that could so, be. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bandwidth, man, I have noticed uh, it, it's been holding for like two weeks now. Steam, what have you done to decongest? Your Atlanta server, I'm finally getting like 550 to 580 down again. Yay. Sorry, mm. I just went through that in. I've, I've, oh, been, stuck, nice. I've been stuck at like 300. Ugh. Yeah. I, I've changed mine to San Diego because the LA one was uh, uh, chugging along. Oh, uh, I'm totally not using the uh, Spain slash Portugal server at all. No, no, no. <laughs> man that, that, <laughs> dude that, i trust me i slapped myself on the side of that and i'm like why am i only getting 35 megs a second down like really really we're upset about this <laughs> no we're not we grew up with dialogue yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so Flatfox. Firefox is Yay. now available on flat hub and it's the latest version and you too can have a reuben sandwich in your lifetime and we're talking, this is quantum. This is not, what is it, ESR, the, the advanced version I have on Debian yes. stale. But <laughs> you can hook it up, man. I mean, there's not a problem there. I mean, it's your standard Firefox. You got your extensions, your themes, Yay. tracking protection. And, Sinking. dude, this thing is sandbox, son. I mean. Nice. Like, <laughs> okay, so what does this have? Downloads folder. And, nope, I didn't start a downloads folder. Yeah, no, did you have access to one folder. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and uh, this is good. It's very good. Um, that's what flat packs are there for. And it's the browser, right? Chances are you already have the native version installed. But if you need a browser to run somewhere really Pedro, quickly. Pedro, what if, <laughs> what if having an application launch a little too fast scares me? <laughs> no. Well, then you can use FlatHub or oh, you can use Snaps. Neat. Or you can use, uh, <laughs> well, the app images are fast enough, but uh, yeah. yeah, no, Flat Hub or Snaps. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will yeah. say, I, I was having a little bit of argument back and forth with a friend the other day, and we were talking about this because what nerds do between, you know, it's like, do you just like the Snaps or the Flat Packs? I'm like, I don't like the only thing I have against them really is having to install another thing in order to do a thing. That's why I and think installing I, the dependencies yeah. for yeah, the that's... new thing. As opposed yeah. to Which, like an app image, because <laughs> exactly. for me, for my use case, if I'm not installing it, if I if I if I'm just taking a little sample pack, give me an app image. I just need to see if it launches. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, do I want to mess with this? Then I'll go install it. But this is there. This is good. Maybe uh, Silver Blue is going to. I, I I still want to set up a box for that and see how that flies. Which is Fedora's flat pack only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brave new world of braveness that nope i'm not that brave just yet <laughs> it's for workstations right if you yeah. want to control exactly the version and everything else that uh, a See, workstation has this, installed on it this is where you win me when you start talking about workstation server backend iot deployment snap flatback i'm like yes yes makes sense when you get to the desktop i'm like that that's a solution in search of a problem yeah i know <laughs> yeah. But know. yeah, everything and... around Linux is for servers because that's where the market is. Linux is for <laughs> desktops, you weeb. <laughs> it's for both. <laughs> There's Microsoft Enterprise. Yeah. I get, yeah, they do. Is that what it's called on Windows Enterprise or? 
Um, we have Enterprise, yes. Okay. Yeah. We used to have Pro. Now we have Enterprise. <sighs> oh, uh. Happy, happy <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like Ben was saying, um, I, I wish there was an officially supported uh, Firefox app image. Um, I'd been using a third-party one for a while, and it it mostly works. But it would be nice to have an officially supported one because um, uh, awesome sandboxing. Um, but normally, I just run the tar.gz uh, Firefox updates. That's that's been my go-to for years, because yeah. they run even on older, you know, older distros on older computers. <laughs> It'll run, so hmm. it's always a nice thing. <laughs> a little bit of like curiously happy, optimistic news is yes, yeah. <laughs> the one of the things that we've I don't know I've not said that about mobile, but. I think I can at least agree with Pedro. It's like, I really want a Linux tablet because mm -hmm. I want at least 10 inches. Make of that what you will. Um, this this is a little smaller than that, but it's a real yes. thing. Yes. And it is uh, coming out late May 2020. Yay. It is the PinePhone UB Ports Community Edition. Uh, awesome. The pre-orders are now open if you'd like to uh, basically help them fund development because that's what they're doing with these pre-orders. It's like you pre-order and you help them uh, and you help fund more development around the whole PinePhone concept. And this one is using UbiPorts, which is the community... Um, they want to call it resurrection, even though I really want to call it resurrection of the um, See, that kind of Unity makes me want to buy project. It, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's basically they took what Canonical left behind after there was the possibility of an IPO uh, in the works, and they decided, you know what, let's not continue with that Unity thing. But part of the community really liked Unity, so that's what it is. And they've been doing a very good job, actually. A better job than canonical ever did in my opinion and yeah the ub ports phone you're looking at the video if you're looking it's at the trying video to version. load youtube this is one of those can you do it little buddy we've all had that moment Aww. with hardware we're like come on <laughs> i'm not saying that as a negative and, way you say it as like morbid curiosity the first time you loaded x on like the original raspberry pi like can you do it oh yeah, yeah. Aww. Right. <laughs> and yeah. To be fair, the specs for the price, they are selling it for the same $150, uh, $150 that all of the other uh, editions of the PinePhone were at least at. That's not a bad price for the specs that you're getting. What it needs mm -hmm. right now is the software, and UB ports is a possibility. There's also Plasma Mobile. There's um, a couple of Android spins uh, that are available for it. Uh, there were a couple of more mm. not uh, other notable. Oh, ports. jellyfish! Yeah, uh, sailfish OS. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. And what's really cool is uh, our very own Sandy Martin here at Linux Gamecast just ordered one, and I'm looking forward yes. to hearing his his thoughts on it because he has actually helped with the development of UB ports. So I'm really looking forward to his opinions on this. I I've been rocking it on my One Plus One uh, for a long time and love it. <laughs> yeah i i too am waiting for sandy's uh take on when he finally gets the phone because mm -hmm. much like the pine book pro developed by the same lovely lovely people it's neat but not you know 150 dollars sight unseen neat so i mean yeah. come on man that's impulse by money <laughs> No, no, impulse yeah. would be like a hundred dollars. <laughs> that would be yeah. No, I'm not even looking at it. Give me one hundred and fifty. <laughs> it's like all right. I'll wait till someone I trust lets me know how it goes. For for like a, um, a smaller project for something that uh, crowdfunding one hundred and fifty bucks. I'm like ah, let's see. Because what I get, but that you will actually get something versus like a lot of times like you'll put one hundred and fifty something like that. And it's like I might get a product. At least you knew you'll get something. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you just might not like it. All right. So the last in our scale interview mm -hmm. series is a tale yeah. of a young man who likes <laughs> to wear things on his head. Oh, yes, yes. So this is this is our, our as Ben was saying, our last scale 18x interview um, with Nova King from chat. He's one of our patrons as well. And he's giving us an update on his 
latest projects and he's been doing some amazing things. Yay! And I'm here again with Nova King and he's going to give us an update on his incredible project which I'm going to let him tell you about. But I just want to thank you. You're one of our LGC patrons now and it's so wonderful having you in chat. It's very cool. <laughs> so here's all about his wonderful project. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm glad to be a patron. So here is my first utility that I created. This is called Quick3D-OpenXR. So the point of it is to allow you to use cute Quick3D scenes as OpenXR clients. So you can create OpenXR applications from Qt using the new rendering engine. So on the screen, I have GLX gears right here. And the reason why is because I created a demo similar called XR gears. The original XR gears was created by Monado in order well, not created by Monado, but, you know, friends of theirs, in order to test out OpenXR. So here is GLX Gears. And on the screen right now, I also have XR Gears, or at least my version of XR Gears. They look very similar, except, of course, XR Gears is here running on a PlayStation VR inside, um, inside of OpenXR through Monado. So now on to my main project, Stardust XR. Stardust XR is going to be an XR compositor for Linux that allows you to use your 2D windows in a fully 3D environment. And you're able to upgrade and augment your 2D workflows. And you're also able to use new XR apps. So you can do Steam VR apps, for example, inside of Stardust. So on the screen right now, I have something called the permissions graph. The permissions graph is a special utility in order to allow you to finally control what data modules and applications get. Since Stardust is a modular system, it's very important that the user is in control of all of the data. So I have previews for what is the input sources and the output sources, and the user deliberately has to connect the two so that it ensures they know exactly what's going on. There's also an ability to de-resolution any of the information or you're able to use special nodes if you're an advanced user. This is the barcode panel. Um, the idea here is that you can have a, a virtual utility scan real world objects. So the red line in the center is the same red line you'd find on a handheld scanner. And you have something called a pulse, which will basically send out an event. So you manually connect the pulse to another object so you can automate Stardust. Then there's a virtual keyboard port. So you can actually connect the virtual keyboard to a keyboard handler. And what that'll allow you to do is whenever you scan an object, it will then send the exact numerical code in ASCII through to that, to wherever you want to put the keyboard. This is my file browser. Unlike traditional flat file browsers, I figured that this one requires more kinesthetic touch. So on the top, you have a bunch of quick access portals and in the center, you have the current file and folder view. So you're able to pick up files physically and you're able to drop them into different folders. And you can tap on the portals to enter directories. On the bottom, there's a bunch of tools and there's two handles for carrying. There's also automation and a settings tab. This is a data cube. I am using this because it is a better analogy than files. So it's really just a visual representation underlying everything is the exact same. So here is a demo of the Stardust input system. The input system uses sign distance fields so that you're able to tell how far inside somebody is reaching or how far inside an object someone is looking. And that allows you to create richer interactions. In this particular case, the redder the sphere is, the closer inside you are looking using a Raymarch pointer. And so on screen right now, I have a, a visual demo. The idea is that you're able to grab the lever and you pull the lever to open up the application dock and then you can pinch apps out of the dock in, into real world space. It's not a very complete demo but it does show off the basics involved. And so that's it. In a, a, few, a little bit later I'll get to explain all of the intricacies. Uh, a bit later I'll get to explain how I created a driver for Monado for OpenXR. Thank you so much Jill. Awesome. It's so wonderful to see all the progress on, on Project Stardust.
I'm so proud of you. And I, once again, I'm here with Nova King. And um, thank you, Matthew Commandon, uh, Lutra Strikor, for letting us use, uh, commandeer your booth <laughs> for the demos. This is great. And I wanted him to talk about his work with Monado and Calabra. This is huge. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm really excited to show everybody. Um, I've created one of the first drivers for an AR headset in an OpenXR runtime. So this headset right here, the North Star, um, Project North Star, that you can actually look up online. So the basic idea is it is a DIY augmented reality headset featuring six degrees of freedom tracking and also hand tracking. However, do note that hand tracking at this time does not work on Linux due to driver issues. Although it possibly will in the future, so stay tuned. Um, so what I did is, um, what I did is I was the main person working on the driver. And then I also had Jacob Bornokratz, I think that's how you pronounce it, who really helped in assisting, you know, integrating all of my code into the Monado code base and refining the code. And because of my code, we now have a complete real sense driver as well. So the sensor that is currently supported is the Intel RealSense T265, and as well as the T261, since, you know, electronically they're identical. So this basically allows you to move around in 3D space and have virtual objects anchored in real space in augmented reality. And the cool thing is because North Star is open source, that means that you have basically an entirely open source software stack. You have Monado at the bottom, you have OpenXR as the standard, you have the North Star driver, and you can even have an XR app that is able to run on North Star, like my project Stardust XR. So I think it's really cool that I got to be a part of one of the first AR drivers for this, and I'm super grateful. And you know, thank you to Jacob Bornokratz and the entire Collabora team, and also thank you to um, Brian, and and Noah Zirkin and everyone else at the North Star. So, thank you. Yay, awesome. That was pretty cool. So do you think like mm -hmm. his, um, Nova King could like his alternate personality is like crime identities like Nova, Nova Kane? He's like, a <laughs> no, 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 no. What are you talking about? He's a dragonborn. He's... Nova King, oh. Nova King. <laughs> oh no, now I want to do Nova Kane to that song. And the dragon's all dragged out. <laughs> <laughs> well, those those demos were were so cool. It was so nice. And and by the way, I'm gonna thank Mr. Alert in chat for his beautiful camera work on all the Scale 18x inter interviews. Thanks for and, doing the work, um, Alan. That was awesome. Yeah, yep. beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, we got a couple of people we got to thank who fund this show. They are our patrons. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. They make all of this possible, and we have a new executive producer, Jill. Yay! <laughs> Leap request! Yay! Thank you so much. You are awesome. We've been enjoying having you in chat. And uh, this is this is wonderful. I, I can't believe, you know, we have people that fund this, <laughs> fund our work. <laughs> <laughs> people who like <laughs> what we do to the point that's like, yeah, I don't mind sharing a little bit of dosh with you. Here you that's go. one way to do it. We don't sell your data. We don't have ads anymore. This is a, an interesting business experiment of we're doing freeware. We're like, hey, we're going to make it if you'd like to help out, you know, and it helps out tremendously. Yeah. You know, <laughs> let's just do what we do. And we're doing stuff like four or five days a week now. No, four days, five days a week. Yeah, it's five, five days yeah. a week. Jeez. Yeah, yes. no, it's a full work week of <laughs> Linux content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It is fun. Plus, we get to make some guides and instructions and stuff like that to help you Linux your best. That that sounds viable. Mm -hmm. I'd go to that school. Learn how to help Linux your best or learn yes. to Linux your best. Now with 90% mm -hmm. less beaks. <laughs> You don't want beaks. It's all penguin rump. Yeah, penguin oh. rump. Man. Dude, that's pretty cool. Uh, think each and every one of your name is always in the credits. It's patron. You get access to our Discord where we're hanging out the other six days of the week. That's where we party hard. We always have IRC completely free, and that's tied into our Discord so we can talk back and forth. And uh, if you like what we do, got another extra hour of content for the beautiful party patrons. So you get a custom RSS feed. 
I made a little special thing. Mm-hmm. Pedro just ordered one already. Pedro's like, oh, you like that? All right, done. I posted that up <laughs> on Patreon. It is yeah. the best, according to old man me. Sub $50 interface, recording interface. Think of it as a sound card because you will use it as a sound card. And I tested it too. I'm like, don't use your interface as a sound card. You're like, oh, I can't hear you. I'm using my interface as sound cards up. Okay, fine. So I tested that too. Uh, sub $50 that I would use myself. In fact, it is plugged in behind me right now. So, hmm. Awesome. Think awesome about sauce. that. And you would be looking, if you're looking to, you know, hey, a lot of people are stuck at home right now. And maybe you want to try this Twitch yeah. thing out. Maybe you want to do the podcast thing. <laughs> you're going to spend money and your budget's like 50 bucks because you can get this for less than $50. Go watch that video. Save yourself and get, get something better quality for a lower price. I'm all about that, man. Mm-hmm. Value. But, um, oh, stick around for your name in the credits. That's kind of a thing. We'll talk over it. We need <laughs> to get into a slice of pie. Because yeah. um, October is right around the corner, isn't it? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say it's not October yet. <laughs> I mean, four months, yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's been further away. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I want to talk about this. Seedstudio.com. I ran across one of their tweets and I'm like, what's this going on? Because I got my little um, tweet deck thing set up for it and just small board computers. This is. Ladies and gentlemen, is rolls off the tongue the Odyssey X86 J4105. It's a Windows 10 mini PC that also supports Linux operating system as opposed to Linux non-operating system. That's called Linux NOS. VTech just kicked in, fam. Uh, dude, mm-hmm. what does this thing have under the hood? Quite a it bit. has a Celeron. It, uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> It, and, uh, it's a dual wait, wait, core of 1.5 gigahertz. It's Celeron. not the dual gigabit that I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Dual Intel gigabit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, ooh, now you have my attention. And yeah. mm-hmm. these things, are, oh, they got a little case for it too. We can't get them yet. They're sold out. Or they haven't shipped to like fourteen ninety for the case. What's the full price deal going to cost me on this one, Pedro? Uh, the full price is... Um... I don't remember, actually. <laughs> what we're looking at, for the, most of you listening on audio, you, we get two regular USB, you get a USB 3.0, you get HDMI, you get two M.2. So you get the B key and the regular M.2 key. And it supports 4G cellular, so it's got a spot for a SIM card. It's got your standard 9-barrel uh, you know, nine volt barrel adapter. I'm sure it's more 9 volts. USB-C, you can also power it through that. It comes with 8 gigs of RAM, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yes. There's an and option it's... for 64 gig of onboard eMMC. Mm-hmm. It also has SATA connectors. Mm-hmm. So this is it, just... it is very much a computer. <laughs> and it's pie yeah. size. When I say pie size, it's got a, the bottom is just a solid slab of aluminium with a fan on it, but it's not terribly thick. This is this is like uh, this is a pie after like Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas yeah. dinner. And it's around two hundred dollars. I think the yeah. full board loaded yeah. one's like two eighty eight. Yeah, uh, two, with, no, with, it's one eighty eight without EMMC and mm-hmm. two hundred and eighteen with, with the EMMC. Okay, module. but and then the, if you the, want Windows, right? There's like the enterprise yeah. activated. Yeah. <laughs> so I am I'm super interested in this because I'm legitimately curious what I can make out of one of these. I want to see if I yeah. can make like a turnkey jack box, audio processing box. But like, hey, everyone, buy this. And this is this is how Flash I end up. this image. Yeah, I, I just realized it's like, oh, that's how I ended up maintaining a distribution. Oh, I remember that moment. I would go back and watch that. <laughs> um, to do something like that for audio processing, but I'd also like to make um, one of these Optiplexes that uh, you guys are on. Mm-hmm which are, you know, Optiplex 3010s and see if I could shrink that down with like even more yeah. power efficiency. I think that's easily doable. Yeah. Easily doable, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's just, it's so nice to have more x86 chips on these single board computers in the space and, and the size because of, you know, be, because of issues with, with heat, with x86 chips. It's remarkable now that we can have have one this small but it does it does have a large heat sink with a fan which mm-hmm. is to cool down the 
the Celeron, the memory, and we, the, we the need video to point card. Out it's got um, <laughs> Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO and Arduino. Oh yes, oh. yes, very cool. This this is yeah. like everybody just put together. It's like factor, you need here. It. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Oh, and it comes with Bluetooth and uh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I agree with you. It's completely asking to be made. If you wanted to make like a psychotically overpowered router or NAS. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, one got, of the yeah. examples that they show is a PFSense. Mm -hmm. So PFSense. hardware yeah. firewall. <laughs> Open yeah. WRT PFSense. Done. Uh, and they yep. got, yeah, 218 for the 64 without starting at 188, man. That's eight gigs of uh, DDR4. That's actually not a bad price if you were, say, looking at the Latte Panda or the, what's mm -hmm. the, the rock one? Okay. Rock, uh, rock pie. Rock, <laughs> rock chip something. Rock chip pie, yeah. <laughs> those, rock chip. <laughs> and those are, you know, the, this is a really crazy powerful, like, so what do you think about Impulse by 188? Because I'm like, I don't know if I should buy one just yet. Maybe I'll give it a minute and let the ecosystem mature. And I'm like, you're just going to make your own stuff for this anyway, then. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> because then I start yeah. thinking about that case that I'm like, you know, if I could 3D print, and it's like, I bet I know. Oh, I know somebody who's offered to 3D print me stuff. Oh. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> then, then, then it's getting Firewire support with an add-in card because you can stack that case. And it, this is perfect, then, because originally you wanted to use the Intel Nook. So th this is great because it's uh, much more price uh, friendly. <laughs> Got to get down to the performance. That is, and yeah, yeah, that it, it's something to play with. I hate it mm -hmm. for the price you can't beat a Raspberry Pi for, but uh, correct, one hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a delightful tinker toy. Yes, one hundred eighty-eight. <laughs> X86. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the key one there. <laughs> so maybe you like to make delightful tinker toys and you would like to tell us about your toy tinkering at tangent tirade of trouble. How could they do that? I nailed that one. I get a point. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, you, you can try uh, your hand at an alliteration with the letter T and uh, see if you do better than Ven. Uh, I probably wouldn't because I uh, fail. <laughs> I fail at English uh, at a fundamental level, mm -hmm. which is it, some things don't make sense in my head, but if you'd like to tell us what it is that in your head doesn't make sense or you'd like to provide some feedback, show us your Tinker Toys, your Raspberry Pi projects, that computer that you installed Linux on because uh, you heard us say something here, lib request, uh, <laughs> and decided to give it a shot, see how it went. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com hitting the contact button and filling out the form. LWDW is the show that you uh, send your feedback to. It's relatively self-explanatory. You hit a button, it does the thing. Also, feel free to share spectacular adventures in failure. I always share those. <laughs> and it's always fun because people learn something. We do. Yes. Yes. Yep. Coming up first, this is from Nathan, man, because uh, we were talking about FTP and Firefox getting rid of support with FTP, you not know, following the steps of uh, Chrome and Chromium and all that. Mm -hmm. Nathan writes, he's like, yo, do people still use FTP? I've got an old copy of FileZilla gathering digital dust somewhere. I'm, I'm just going to go directly back to what I said during that episode. No mm -hmm. one uses or needs FTP right up until the point you do. And you're like, what? <laughs> oh, yes. ha. Huh. I got to do a thing with the thing. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I remember everyone, uh, your file managers on, on Linux also allow you to do FTP. They're real popular ones like Nautilus and Dolphin. And I hadn't and used Thunar. them for that in a while. But yeah, and Thunar. So, but that, that does work. But one more <laughs> Thunar, SFTP. <laughs> yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, that's yeah. the best way to do it. I mean, I have drives networked. Like that yeah. in my like hot link. I'm like yep. boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. And that's how we SSH. Yeah. That's called networking <laughs> in this house. Um Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's mm -hmm. a thing. Uh I don't know. I've never I don't have a copy of Final Zilla still installed, but I Oh, it's not installed. I I I do have the Tardot GZ in my external hard drive, just in case. <laughs> what is the what is it? W U F T P the G T K one that looks like the old ancient version of that yes. Windows thing that's been around since the dawn of it days. Sure does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that thing, you know, it's like the four you know, the left and right arrows in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess yeah you, the classic. Yeah. Well, you can just use FTP from the command line. Um, hi, NVIDIA. Yeah. I've navigated your nightmares doing that, trying to get a driver back in the day. I remember that. Mm -hmm. It was like etched in my brain. I'm like, ah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, we do have a question about Da Vinci. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take this one? Joel? So then, uh, then I got it installed on Pop OS using your method. Only issue I had was that exporting. Sounds naughty, isn't it? <laughs> no, only issue I had was exporting. I would get no audio at all. The only way I could figure it out was export the video and audio separately, then combine all the audio into one file with Audacity, then finally put it all together with Caden Live and export there. Even if I can't ever get the audio to export, then I will continue to use Resolve on Linux with this workflow. It's a great editor and the color grading is so powerful. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, Veldi, you need to find another option because you're reducing quality by importing and exporting into into, you know, Caden Live. And uh yeah, that's not good either. <laughs> And we had, I, I found a lot of people that had this issue um, on uh, Reddit. this issue? He's describing a yeah. different issue. Yeah. The one that oh, you yeah, you were saying, mm -hmm. okay, that was for playback, not export. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're going to do exporting, if you even, let's say this is your solution, um, export in a lossless uh, container, like a, a wave, put out a wave. You're not going to lose quality. You can move that around constantly, you know? And you're going to have the option to export uh, lossless with your video. You can do that in um, Blackmagic's little, what, what is it, uh, DNX HD. It's got mm -hmm. lossless support. That's mm -hmm. going to up a lot of space. But what you might run into, you genuinely might with DaVinci Resolve, is, because this doesn't sound very intuitive, I have templates for the different shows and different things I do that are just set up, configured the way I need it. But if I need to like open up a new one just from scratch by default, when you go to your audio tab in DaVinci, audio exports not highlighted. It's now that checkbox is not ticked by default. So mm. yeah, yeah. Sometimes double check the, that. That's yeah. just how the default setting. That has no input from any user whatsoever. That's just how a new session will start. And that's how it does. Mm -hmm. But um, one option. Well, the options is you're going to have to. You're on Linux. You're only going to be able to export um, PCM, WAV files, linear PCM. We don't have an um, option to mm -hmm. do, you know, AIFF or anything like that. So that's it. One thing I will throw in there, just on the topic, as somebody who's played the Da Vinci game to the point of like, I need to know everything I need to know about this program. Smartest thing I did was to get an Intensity Pro for my audio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Intensity pros mm -hmm. are so cheap. People give them away in computers. <laughs> yes, that's oh, how yeah. I got one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, all that is, I mean, the, the Intensity Pro, there, there's the original version. That's all you need. There's the 4K version. I have one of each. Because um, what it has is a breakout. Uh, spot which yeah you know, i didn't get that <laughs> yeah the cable if you get it from black magic is like 150 there's a knockoff version uh -huh. which is the one i bought that's seven but it'll give you the options for the left and right stereo pair audio that you can run out into a mixer and davinci can use that directly and guess what black magic hardware works really good with black magic software on linux and yes. <laughs> um, that is perfect for your perfect sync and live audio tracking like i have a challenge in this mixer just for that when I'm doing editing. So good luck, best of luck. And hey, man, I'm glad you found a workable solution. But yeah, uh, write, write me back. Let me know if, uh, what you come up with. Hmm? Yeah. Sounds good. Keep us updated. That is a thing. Um, and we have, uh, nope, that's it. We got to get out of here. Jeez. No. All right. Aww. That is very much it. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> but we'll be back um, next Wednesday. Come say hi, watch us live, or after the fact. Uh, even if we're on YouTube, and you probably already know you're listening to this on audio, what we do there. All right. Credits. Let's roll up. <laughs> Yay! Do, do, do. Oh, yeah. I, I should say thanks to O'Dung for the follow earlier. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. 
Oh, dumb. <laughs> and Marnitas. <laughs> Marnitos08. <laughs> thank you for the follow. And thank you again to LibreQuest, our newest executive producer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marnetto oh wait. That sounds like a nice oh, Yeah, I know it does. <laughs> <laughs> I had to zoom in on it to be able to read that. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely zero in an eight. Thank you, all our Thank patrons, you, all our beautiful it patrons. Last minute. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make the right minute. there. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the sub, Mir. See you next week. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>